we are meeting the immediate needs uh, with the money that we have. We are expecting another hurricane hitting. Uh, we do not have the funds, FEMA does not have the funds to make it through the season. Well, I mean, it's, Look there's at that. so many Look different that states number. that were hit. That would help with a lot of floods. Dollars, and now we're up to 640. That million. money should go toward these American families. Hello, everyone. So you got the dog workers strike. From Maine to Texas, dock workers at 36 ports along the eastern U.S. have walked off the job for the first time in decades. The Middle East going on fire. Good evening and welcome. It was Iran who struck tonight in the ever-spiraling cycle of violence in the Middle East. Iran launching waves of missiles toward Israel in retaliation for its recent killing of the leader of Hezbollah. And Hurricane Haleen. This is an unprecedented storm, and it's causing us to have an unprecedented response. But all I want to know is, where the hell is Joe Biden? Meanwhile, our current president, Joe Biden, spent 16 days in the last two months in that chair. I think it's a Tommy Bahama chair uh, at the beach in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Well, that's just lovely. And then you got Kamala Harris offering $750 to Americans. And the federal relief and assistance that we have been providing has included um, FEMA providing $750 for folks who need immediate needs being met, such as food, baby formula, and the like. And So let me get this straight. The migrants have received billions of dollars in assistance, in addition to the rest of the world who have been literally funded by us, the taxpayers. And when we encounter a natural disaster like Hurricane Haleen, this government offers American victims $750? It's beyond outrageous. Let's get started. Good evening and welcome. It was Iran who struck tonight in the ever spiraling cycle of violence in the Middle East. The U.S. says around 200 Iranian ballistic missiles launched from Iran rained down across Israel this evening, sending people running for cover. Also seen over Jerusalem's western wall and across the country. Israel says its air defenses taking out most of the incoming missiles. We are seeing some of these missiles, they are either falling apart, a sign that they have been intercepted, or they are making their way down towards the ground here in northern Israel. The IDF says around 180 Iranian missiles fired in total in two waves, minutes apart. We are once again seeing the skies lighting up now. Traveling the nearly thousand miles from Iran to Israel in just 11 minutes. Later, like millions of others, we took cover when we heard the warning sirens. That's the sirens. We're going to head to safety. What a shame. But remember what they told us. Oh, if Trump wins, he's going to get us into World War III. It's going to be chaos around the world. Don't vote for Donald Trump, guys. <laughs> and now we are at the brink of World War III. In fact, some have already stated that we are in the beginning stages of World War III. It's a true disgrace and an embarrassment. By the same token, America is currently facing a major dog workers strike. Workers and ports are still far apart on negotiations this morning and worry that the strike will last for weeks could be fueling a surge in panic buying. Stores across the country are starting to see empty shelves, really long lines. This is one in Virginia. Uh, I'm sure we all remember the hoarding and supply chain issues during the pandemic. News Nation senior investigative reporter Rich McHugh is at the port of Elizabeth in New Jersey. And Rich, these supply chain fears will only grow the longer the strike lasts. How far apart exactly are these two sides? 
I'm talking with some of the long, longshoremen here this morning. They are dug in, uh, prepared for a long fight if needed, and it's just it's it's like a party atmosphere out here. They're they're not going anywhere. Uh, most most goods that come through here for Americans, everything we we eat, wear, use, comes through ports like this. Most of them, not all. Last year alone, it was $588 billion worth of goods come through ports like this one. And people are freaking out, and it has people buying in panic. Take a look. From Maine to Texas, dock workers at 36 ports along the eastern U.S. have walked off the job for the first time in decades, raising serious questions about disruptions to the supply chain and the possibility of widespread shortages if this continues. Here in New Jersey, customers at Costco stocking up in case. I needed supplies. I had no choice. And of course, I'm like anybody else anticipating a long range strike at the port. So that's why I'm got a trunk full of stuff cases of water paper towels and the elusive toilet paper people were living with seven or eight in their carts and there's none and they said come back tomorrow now can you really blame americans for panic buying this just highlights the lack of trust we have in the system moreover this is giving us shades of covid at the same time if this situation becomes a long lasting one then it can certainly affect certain prices and give inflation another major spike like we need one right social media posts like these popping up about runs on water toilet paper showing shelves normally overflowing with paper towels now barren chris spear ceo of the american truckers association predicts consumers will see shortages in the produce section as early as this week two weeks three weeks you're going to start to see things slip into uh the holiday season i want the community to start preparing i want them to go get essentials uh not you, you don't have to to rush panic buy but I do want them to have some essentials at their house, toilet paper, paper towels, things of that nature. The Biden administration hoping to avoid chaotic scenes of hoarding like this from 2020 at the start of the pandemic. They say they're working nonstop with both sides to push the negotiations forward. Yep, it's all lack of trust because we don't have real leadership. Now, Let's uh, jump into the situation with Hurricane Haleen. As many as 600 people are still on the missing list as search teams fan out across the state, navigating the worst flooding to hit the region in a century with thousands of downed trees, power and mobile outages and hundreds of closed roads. It's indescribable. I don't know, it just was covered in litter and trees and mud and it's stinky and it was all the way up the street up here. It just looks like the bottom of a river. An apocalyptic stew of rubble and debris after Helene ripped through the state, unleashing torrential downpours and catastrophic mudslides, killing 47 in North Carolina alone so far and more than 115 in total since last Thursday. That's when Helene first made landfall on Florida's Gulf Coast as the most powerful hurricane, a Category 4, ever to hit the so-called Big Bend region before tearing northeast through Georgia, the Carolinas and Tennessee. Lawrence Ainsley and Steve, good morning, friends. Later today, President Biden is set to return to the South. He's going to be touring the hurricane damage left behind from Hurricane Helene. He'll be in South Georgia, and it comes just one day after the president was in the Carolinas. The president getting a firsthand look at some of the devastation, while the Federal Emergency Management Agency says it doesn't know how much money it's going to need to clean up this damage. Also, it doesn't know if it's going to have enough money to make it through the rest of hurricane season, which stretches on until the end of November. DA HS officials say they don't know how much money they're going to ask Congress for. Biden critics, though, say they are amazed that the president is making the trip while accusing him of being missing in action as Helene hit. Our latest count shows the president spending a lot of time away from Washington. And this is not a new trend. Biden's raised eyebrows before for his constant travels away from Washington. When President Trump was in office, he too was regularly criticized for visiting Florida and New Jersey on a regular basis. This week, though, the president rejected the idea that he's asleep at the wheel. Mr. President, why weren't you and Vice President Harris here in Washington commanding this this weekend? 
I was commanding. I was on the phone for at least two hours yesterday and the day before as well. I command. It's called a telephone. There's an op-ed on Fox right now from David Marcus who writes, in a normal world, Joe Biden would have stepped down by now and be free, free to lay on the beach in Delaware all day, which he does anyway. But these are not normal times. So until January 20th, the best we can do is cross our fingers and hope for the best. This is what America has become. Let's just cross our fingers until January 20th. Unfortunately, we have no other choice. It's sickening. And right about that time when we are crossing the fingers, we just learned that FEMA is running out of money. Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas sounding the alarm on FEMA funding right after the devastation of Hurricane Helene. Listen. We are meeting the immediate needs uh, with the money that we have. We are expecting another hurricane hitting. Uh, we do not have the funds. FEMA does not have the funds to make it through the season. This all comes as the Biden-Harris administration spent over a billion dollars from a FEMA program on services for migrants. FEMA does not have the funds to make it through the hurricane season. Here's the problem. The hurricane season runs through the last day of November. They are expecting another hurricane, but they don't have enough money. They should change things around at the Department of Homeland Security that Mayorkas is in charge of because they've got millions and millions of millions of dollars not going toward Americans, but going toward processing people who are in this country illegally. Well, I mean, it's Look there's at that. so many different Look at that states number. that were hit. Mm -hmm. That would help with a lot of floods. Dollars, and now we're up to six hundred and four. That money million. should go toward these American families this that have lost everything. I mean, there's there's no. I mean, if, if you're going to have the policy of just keeping the board border wide open, you know you're going to have to spend more money for processing and migrant shelters and feeding those kids that are coming across the border because you said that it was okay for the parents to come across the border. We knew that there was going to be some sort of deficit with the surge of migrants coming across the border. It looks like the administration didn't calculate that with a request from Congress, and now they don't have enough money for when the things that we need, which is the American citizens in the middle of a crisis. Oh, but don't you worry, Americans, because you got Kamala Harris coming with a great offer. And I want to thank the local leaders for together creating a task force like response, knowing that we are at our best when we work together and coordinate resources, coordinate our communications to the maximum effect for the community that has been impacted. Uh, and the federal relief and assistance that we have been providing has included um, FEMA providing $750 for folks who need immediate needs being met, such as food, baby formula, and the like. And you can apply now for anyone who's watching this who has been affected. There are FEMA personnel who are going door to door to interact personally with folks, especially those who do not have electricity but also um, that, that aid, if you have electricity, can be applied for online. And I encourage people to do that. FEMA will just basically verify your address and then the process should take um, hold. You see, guys, the reason why Americans in need are only getting a measly $750 is because they are not migrants. They are not crossing over the border illegally. And so you guys need to get with the program, cross the damn border and get the benefits. Come on, guys. Thank you for watching. Do not forget the shout outs are down below for my amazing supporters. Smash the like button, subscribe and share this video. I will see you guys next time.